Okay, Nick and Andy, the huge news around the US men's national team this week, of course, is that Maurizio Pochettino is the new head coach of the US men's team. He's got a contract through the end of the 2026 World Cup on home soil. We all know that's the big project, the big hope, the big aim for Pochettino to do well at that tournament. And now he's got two years in the run-up to that to get it right. And yeah, some of his comments was pretty exciting. Um, I think we look through it, Nick and Andy. It's it's quite interesting how much he's already been studying and watching the growth and development of the U.S. soccer closely. I just want to read out his comments on taking a job. And he said, the decision to join U.S. soccer wasn't just about football for me. It's about the journey that this team and this country are on. The energy, the passion, the hunger to achieve something truly historic here. And those are the things that inspired me. The opportunity to lead the USMNT in front of fans who are just as passionate as the players is something I couldn't pass up. I see a group of players full of talent and potential, and together we're going to build something special that the whole nation can be proud of. Nick, what do you think? What do you make of that? Oh man, what do I make of it? I don't know. I, he could have literally. It, it's great. Let me say that. So I don't mean to dismiss anybody's enthusiasm because I'm enthusiastic. But he could have come out and yeah. said, "Hi, I'm Maurizio Pochettino. I'm the new manager of the national team. Let's get going." period, end quote. And I would have been like, let's go. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm excited on the whole. And so when you hear someone who, who has been paying attention to the team or at least to the landscape around here, to some degree, it does feel, which is nice for us as a, as a nation, as a soccer nation, it doesn't just feel like lip service. But to me, he, again, he, he could have said anything. Uh, this is something I'm just terribly excited about. Andy, do you echo those views, Mike? Yeah, he's a he's a romantic about football, and having you know been a fan of a team that he managed for for quite a while, you you hear the way that he talks about the game and the sport um, and winning. Win, winning is the thing that, that that means the most to Maurizio Pochettino, and and I know he's not done maybe a ton of that uh, as a manager at the club level. Obviously, he had some success with PSG, uh, but but he loves the game in a way that I don't. Not to say that Greg Berhalter did, not to say that Jurgen Klinsmann didn't, um, but he loves it differently, I think, than anybody that we've had in that chair before. Now, I don't know how much that's going to matter for results on the field. Uh, I, I think the impact of the manager at the international level is is probably overstated just a little bit, and it's true. The U.S. probably now has one of the, what, three, four, five best managers in the international game at the moment. I think it'll matter a little bit uh, on the edges uh, if you will, where, you know, maybe there's a moment um, and, and and he can bring that belief back uh, to the team, I, I think is the number one most important thing that he can do now. It's not about the style. It's not about the way they play. It's about giving them confidence um, and, and a little bit of, uh, they need some cockiness, uh, I, I think, to go out there and play with, uh, to be as good as this generation of players can potentially be. And almost to feel uneasy, right? The, the main note that we've yeah. taken from a lot of the players after Bill Halter was fired was that, yeah, things were a bit too comfortable and we need someone to push us and make us feel uncomfortable to reach the levels we hope and we kind of know that we can reach individually and as a team as we enter our prime. So it does seem like the kind of perfect fit, at a really crucial time for this group and US soccer as a whole heading towards this 2026 World Cup. And the view from over here in England is that how on earth have they pulled this off? And I think it's kind of around the rest of the world. It is a great job. It's it's a job that you know, most coaches want to take. But I think everyone around the world is now sat up and take notice. Like, okay, the US men's national team, they mean business now ahead of this World Cup on home soil. This is, this is a different feel and I think different kind of almost respect level internationally that they're going to do this thing right. And Nick, you want to jump in on one more point there? I, I do. I mean, I think this is the perfect storm. It's 20, 21 months, and no one like Maurizio Pochettino was going to take this job for 23 months. I mean, that's obviously I'm being a little bit exaggerated there, but this is the perfect window to get someone like that. And I, I don't disagree with what Andy's saying philosophically. Everything he says about the international game is right. But what's been missing for me is um, is a game-by-game -game approach, is a real meaningful we might outfox the other manager we might have and more importantly we may now have a proper 
understanding, a proper philosophy, a proper mindset about where this country is. Because Not this country, but this generation is. Because it's fantastic talent-wise, but it has so much work to do. And while I do want there to be more arrogance, more cockiness, I would rather say I'd like them to be brash and I'd like them to be humble as well. I'd like them to understand the game and not that because they won a Nations League that they're going to go win a World Cup now, that they've completely you know, closed the gap between these major nations. And I think th there's, I hate saying this because Andy's going to not roll his eyes, but he's going to feel like, oh no. Uh, they need He needs to look at the United States like Spurs were looked at 10 years ago, right? In, in comparison to the rest of the Premier League. We have to we we have the talent to hang in every game, but can we maximize that talent and approach the game with respect and humility for where we stand in it? No, exactly the, the great point there. I think that's yeah. what this is all about. This this appointment is okay when you get to the World Cup last sixteen or quarterfinals, hopefully or further, hopefully. How <laughs> do you get past that? And Pochettino, I think, thrives being the underdog and his work that he did at Southampton at Tottenham. Yeah. Um, and that kind of mentality that oh, we're going to yeah. prove you wrong, we're going to run through brick walls, and we're going to, you know, find a way like he did against Man City and Pep Guardiola over and over the the years in those kind of tournament situations in the Champions League, etc. Yeah. He somehow, Andy, right, can find that extra few percentages or just make the big boys feel uncomfortable and, and that they're coming for them. Yeah, he, he's great at punching up, if you will. You know, we 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 kind of we take away from from teams or players or coaches that that you know that beat the lesser teams he's always traditionally maybe struggled a little bit with those and done well against some of the big boys teams that you yeah. wouldn't expect uh, them to go on and beat and and it is the mentality he's poach as a manager kind of a mentality monster we talk about that with players sometimes who are just really smart and 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 hard workers and just committed to the cause and understand the game and read it and everything and we talk about all these kind of you know things that you intangible things that you can't really point to and and say well that's that happening right there that's kind of what he specializes in and it does feel like uh, to kind of go back to your point from earlier Joe as as uh, how he fits with this group of players and what's needed at the time it is all about the mental game the more that we sit here and talk I listen to you Joe I listen to you Nick it's the mental things that have been uh, the the most salient points that you guys have made, but it's also the thing that has popped up time and time again for this team, and I think bitten them. And, and it's certainly what we saw at Copa America. We saw uh, a mental weakness for Tim Weah to do what he did, and then we saw mental weakness, I think, from the rest of the team for the next game and a half to really just kind of pack it in and accept what was going to happen to them at, at the tournament. And that's not what we're here for from this generation. So if anybody can take them to that next level mentally um, and, and toughen them up and make them, I don't know if they need to be made to believe because I think they believe, I think they've been told long enough that they're good enough and that they can do this, but somebody that's going to push them to actually do it, I don't think that was Greg Berhalter. No, and now Maurizio Pochettino is in charge. Let's kind of focus on the big winners and losers from a playing perspective, Nick. There's a few players I feel like will really suit his style and, and just be Pochettino's cup of tea and he'll love working with them. And there's a few other players you're thinking, yeah, maybe they won't have that big of a role on his <laughs> team as they have done previously. I've listed a few names and um, I think... I'll run through a couple. Tim Ream, I think may, you know, we may have just seen sort of the end of his national team career. Um, he's a great player, great veteran to have around, but I think there are now the likes of Chris Richards, Carter Vickers, good centre backs coming through where maybe he'll be in squads just to help out um the transition almost between coaches. But I, I think we saw in some of the mistakes recently, maybe the winding down of his international career. And we all love Tim Ream. Great guy, great yeah. player, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, servant to U.S. soccer over the years. Um, and, and I also think Tim Weah, you mentioned him there, Andy. Um, unbelievable talent. But when you look at Pochettino's teams over the years, he never really has had like out-and-out -out wingers like Weah. Um, he likes to have players mm -hmm. cutting inside, um, getting involved in the play that way, fullbacks pushing on. And I'm just not sure if Weah really fits the plan. And this is a loose one because I know he's going to be the main man, but... I, I'm actually a bit concerned about Christian Pulisic and how he fits into a Pochettino team and style. Because if I, I look at the players and the playmakers he's kind of worked with, Adam Lallana, 
did great for him at Southampton. Deli Alley and Christian Eriksen in slightly different roles, great at Tottenham. Even recently at Chelsea, the evolution and the rise of Cole Palmer, Pochettino played a huge role in that. But kind of slightly different players than Pulisic, it feels to me. And I, I just don't know if it'll be like, we'll be having a discussion every camp or every round of international games. Like, ah, how's he going to get the best out of Pulisic? Where's the best position for him? I feel like we've been having that conversation a lot, but we might be having it a lot more under Pochettino. Nick, I can already see you shaking your head, so I don't think you agree on the Pulisic point. Um, I, he's a great player, but I just have a slight concern about the style fit for him under Pochettino. So what about you, mate? Who do you think are going to be some of the players who might be on the outside looking in on the Poch? Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're potentially right on Ream, but that writing may have been on the wall based on just the mistakes he made in general. Um, the center back and the center forward pool are the most interesting ones to me. That's not to say the Fuller and Balogun is going to be on the outs or um, – or that any any other player is going to be on the outs. But I just think when a new manager comes in and the position isn't solidified other than potential. So this goes for Chris Richards or Cam Carter, Vickers, whoever. It becomes about who you can trust. And when you're gearing up as quickly as he's going to have to gear up, there's going to become a guy that he's going to have his own. And I say this in no way to try and you know blight former players or, or or whatever but he's going to have his what greg berhalter had with jesus ferreira or with ricardo pepe where it's like i this guy's done it for me so you know i know haji Wright's having a better time of it right now with the club but i just i i see something here yeah and that so i mean i don't have any worry about pulisic style wise a little bit maybe but he'll figure it out. He's a competitor. He's the guy you want leading that mentality change. He even, as you mentioned, talked about it. I don't have worries about, you know, Anthony Robinson or that, that he'll sort out center midfield because he had so many people. But if I'm a center back or a center forward right now, I'm thinking I could become the starter at the World Cup or I could be out of yeah. this thing in a couple months. Yeah, it's a great point, right, Andy? I mean, when we look at the big winners from Pochettino coming in, I think Carter Vickers is going to be one of the big winners in terms of yeah. – He's someone that Pochettino raved about coming through the academy at Tottenham, gave him his opportunity in the professional game. Didn't quite work out, but he had Jan Vertonghen and Toby Alderweireld ahead of him for many years yeah. at Tottenham. So this kind of this path was blocked there. But I think he's someone who's going to fit Pochettino's style perfectly. Um, Weston McKenney as well. I just see that kind of all action, heart on the sleeve, central midfielder, bombing on from midfield. Yeah. Someone kind of similar. To, I know it kind of reminds me of like Moussa Dembele and that role he had for Tottenham and sort of the destructive can get on the ball and make things happen. Um, and then I have Gio Reyna. I know he's got an injury right now, but I feel like when we talked about Christian Eriksen um, and that kind of mold and Poch loves those players who can, I'm not going to say drift through a game and then make something happen, but I just, they have that extra quality and he's okay with having nine other guys who are working their socks off if there's that extra bit of quality that one can provide. And I think, Gio, this could be kind of a pathway back in for him, given some of those other silky playmakers I talked about, Deli Ali, Ericsson, Lalana, Palmer, that he's had in his teams over the years and he's willing to kind of find a role for them somewhere. Man, I feel like we all could use a fresh start with the U.S. men's national team right about now, right? But I probably nobody more so than Gio Reyna there. It's in hindsight, a bit strange that Greg Berhalter was back in as coach of the team with him on the team after everything that played out following the World Cup. Um, you know, that's just fact of life around U.S. soccer, I, I guess. So yeah, bringing Pochettino, bringing anybody else in, uh, going to be kind of a new lease on life, I think, for Reyna. And it, and it is that kind of um, the aggressive attacking number eight spot that I really want to see him settle into long to long term uh, for the national team because I mean we've seen him enough on the wings and uh, one that's where Pulisic wants to play uh, and, and two I just don't think he's uh, he's not a one v one player and, and you're spending a lot of time going one v one against the fullbacks out there and and he struggles with that a little bit and so when he's in the middle he's one of the smartest players at reading the game that we have in the national pool he's certainly one of the most creative and he's one of the most audacious. One of the most confident uh, type of players that maybe will have a hit from long range. And there was a couple instances in the game uh, over the weekend or this week against New Zealand where Eunice Musa let a couple shots go from distance. And I thought, well, until the U.S. gets uh, a reliable number nine or even a number 10 who's going to create a lot of scoring chances, I think they could do with someone who's going to have some shots from that range to pull the defense out just a little bit, create a little bit more space, But because teams right now not respecting the U.S. whatsoever defensively. 
defensively, and then they're just sitting in deep and saying, you can have the ball, pass it around, and, and, and we don't think you can break us down. Geo is probably that player in the pool who, in the right role, uh, in the right role I, I think, can, can impact games in that way. So fingers crossed for fitness, fingers crossed for health, and fingers crossed that when he meets Pochettino, they get on really well. <laughs> That would be great. And I think uh, to wrap this up, the other big winners, like Nick mentioned, is the fullbacks. They are so important in the way Pochettino mm -hmm. wants to play. And Anthony Robertson seems like a perfect fit. And when he is fit, Sergino Dest as well. That that seems to be absolutely perfect, perfect fits for the way Poch wants to play. All right. In terms of when he does play, head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com. We'll keep you updated. His first games as USMNT manager is coming up against Panama at home in October and then away against Mexico. So a couple of big games mm. for Pochettino to get things kicked off. Cannot wait to see how this all unfolds. And the early signs are very exciting for the U.S. men's national team under Pochettino. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host of NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And if you want even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock.